Councillor Gary Smith, yes. owner of Gaia Green. No, Gaia, Gaia Principles. Gaia Integrated Principles. Pest Management Services. Gaia Principles Integrated Pest Management Services. Yeah. Okay, so the people who have watched the video from the two scientists who came to town to talk about GE GMO um, would have seen Mr. Smith here. Integrated Pest That's Management. Gary, Gary no more. Yeah. None yeah. of us yeah. want to hear him. As you will. You make a speech to and standing up for what he believes is the point of view that makes sense to him and is, is, it's his right to do so. And in the favor, in, in the spirit of balanced reporting, we're going to let Mr. Smith have his say and maybe I'll try and pepper him with some questions, though I'm not as knowledgeable about the subject as, as he is and as the people last night were. But here we go. So, Gary. So I, I guess my principal issue with what went ha what happened last night, I was invited to attend that by Sheila Dobie. Um and she's very familiar with my concerns on the position, especially in council. I was the one person that voted against being designated a GE free zone uh, because it simply is untrue. We aren't. Uh, so why call yourself that? And I, and I think it, it's almost, it almost has a, it's, it's almost waxing religious, you know, where folks get on a, on a bandwagon and without being fully educated or actually partially educated, which is even more dangerous, um, they start, you know, chuckling like a train down the track and pushing people out of the way and trying to make their point, which is not necessarily true not necessarily fact-based, and not necessarily effective. Okay. Okay, so let's go at these things first, and mm -hmm. then we should them up. <clears throat> the uh, City Council, it was two or three meetings ago, uh, you alluded to the fact that uh, the people in the community who represent the local equivalent of the GE free uh, effort in BC came to council and asked council to declare this a GE free zone and yeah, so realistically I understand it's kind of like saying we're a nuke free zone when we've never had any nuclear weapons or power plants here. But isn't that more along the lines of when communities do that? I know a lot of them may feel like, oh, we're going to make sure there's no GE GMO crops here, but we know that that's not going to happen. Right. There's it's no way to police it. There's no way to monitor it. There's no way to prove it's true or false. But, it, but isn't it more along the lines of getting a, uh, a level of government to agree with the spirit of the effort? Yeah. And I understand what that's all about. I was at the UBCM, and um, again, this discussion was very polarized. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, there was a majority, and they had to do the count twice. Uh, to determine that there was a majority of people at UBCM uh, represented. And the for the people out there who don't know what that acronym is, that's the uh, Union, Union of BC Municipalities. So that would be local governments? Yes, yeah, yeah throughout BC. Yeah. So again, it was a very polarized uh, polarized discussion and, and, and quite heated, actually. It was, it was great to see it, um, that level of debate, which I think this really deserves. This, a conversation isn't about just putting out your point of view and everybody going, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Conversation is something that happens between people. Right. And that's why I thought validly that I was there to, and by invitation, there to express my point of view in the face of what I thought wasn't <laughs> necessarily true. I understand. And she did give you lots of Yes, and, 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 I really, and I really, I respected her for that. Um, I, I was actually kind of shocked that um, as many people there that, that shut me down and set me back in, you know, I was, I was actually kind of surprised because I, I thought it was about information. And, you know, it's, it's a dialogue, it's a debate, it's, it's and Alex Adamenko, our MP, shut, being the first one to shut me down. I, I was shocked, actually, that um, he would have the, you know, that he would do that. do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know, right? 
it, it, I was very frustrated. You could tell that by the end of the night. So I guess in a sense, <clears throat> people's passions are showing more than their reasoning for their. Yes, passion. well, they, that's what I'm thinking, right? Okay. You know, I, I I've worked in this industry for a long time. I was a research assistant with Ag Canada. It doesn't make me a scientist, but I worked along scientists. Mm -hmm. You know, those two guys can't deliver the message I think that they're trying to deliver. Like I say, it's if you can't baffle them with brilliance, you baffle them with bullshit. Okay, okay. So the message that they're trying to deliver, uh, what do you believe that is? Well, I think it's skewed, right? You know, this 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 thing about two four D and glyphosate and all this kind of stuff. I. Uh, I was just shocked by some of the, uh, I guess, some of the implications that they were making mm -hmm. about the effects of this stuff. Two four D is the most studied chemical in the world, the most studied chemical in the world. Aspartame runs a close second, okay. and yet all the myth information out there indicates that you know all this stuff is going to kill you. So when 2,4-D is conflated with dioxin, is, is that not true? Or when, when, I mean, I, I remember what, three what years we, ago hearing that... The chemicals the, that we use in the Vietnam yeah, War yeah, are not yeah. what we're using now. Right. You know what I mean? And it's usually the adjuvants and all that kind of stuff. Like, organic producers are allowed to use pe chemical pesticides. So what's an adjuvant? Well, an adjuvant is something that makes it more effective, okay. or it's a binding agent, or, you know, because you, you go to the, you go buy a, a thing of diazonon, and it okay. says guaranteed 5% diazonon. Okay. Well, 95% of that is an adjuvant, something that either makes the, the, um, the chemical spread on the plant, or, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it could be a surfacant, it could be a spreader, a sticker. In other words, uh, so it will <clears> stick <throat> on the plant as opposed to falling to the ground or whatever. Yeah, it's just dripping off. Yes. Right. Okay. So, uh, a very minor part of most pesticides are the actual active ingredient. Okay. And people should know this. Because you go to the, you, you listen on the news and TV and ads and all this kind of stuff, Scott's Green you know, Green Guard or whatever, you know, the, the stuff that's supposed to be better for the earth. Mm -hmm. It's the same stuff, because it's the same active ingredient. Mm -hmm. Prometrins have been used for a long, long, long time. Okay. And, you'll, and you'll find that, you know, in something that was available 20 years ago has 5% Prometrin in it. And then, you know, companies then, they just, because they're following, they're following the the crowd, mm -hmm. right? So they're following the crowd and saying, okay, well, people want safer stuff. Right. Hey, it's packaging. It's marketing. It's labeling. It's got nothing to do with what's in it. Right. So, in other words, read the we're words. just, it's, don't we're, worry about it. Exactly. The movement is, it's a self-perpetuating uh, marketing machine. And it's, it's about selling. And yeah, maybe these big companies are evil and they're also all about profit. But man, people fuel it. And they, and, they, and they allow themselves to be deceived by their own... Fears? Their own fears and their own lack of knowledge. Okay, so last night, uh, speaking of this, the active ingredients, uh, yes. the first thing that you latched onto, and you seem to be pretty, pretty much stuck with that, well, stuck, stuck on that one thing, Again and again was BT. Yeah, Bacillus uh, thuringiensis. Okay, yeah. so um, <clears throat> I did some research since last night, and, and, and most of the things I can find on the web about BT, the original, as it was originally used, BT, mm -hmm. uh, say it's it's completely safe to use on plants. In yeah. fact, Mother Earth News had yeah. that too. Um, and the BT that they're talking about was. BT as a gene, as a gene in a plant, in, in a plant so it expresses right. expresses the cry and it, yeah, yeah and it it's a lateral gene transfer and blah blah blah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, address that. Yeah, well, I don't think we, we'd all be dead. We'd all be dead. If that was happening. Yes. Okay. 
They talked about 50, well, how many? 50 or 500 million acres of, of, GMO. of GMO. And, and, GMO. And by their own definition, 90% right. is the uh, Roundup Ready stuff. And 5%. And 5% or 15% yeah. is uh, BT. Right. Ooh. We'd be seeing like a pretty good mass extension. Well, that would be on. if if the lateral transfer is in, and if the proteins were were even being expressed. Even he said it's yeah. rare. Right. Yeah, I understand. He even said it's rare. But you're saying, you're more likely to get AIDS than you are to have your bowels screwed up through a through lateral a gene transfer from a BT engineered plant. It's ridiculous. Okay. okay. So you're not saying necessarily that it's it never happens, but it happens so small, right. such small quantities that it's... This is, this is fear-mongering. Okay. And at the end of the day, when I offered him my card, he says, well, no, you can get some information from the back. Yeah, yeah, if I paid 30 bucks for it. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I went on their website, and I was given this link by, you know, uh, maybe, maybe it was Sheila, maybe it was Jan Westland, um, <clears throat> to go to the the website where these guys were featured. And I went on there, and they're charging like 75 to to $100 for some CD that, you know, you can educate yourself on this stuff. These guys are just making money. They're not working for Ag Canada anymore. They're just, you know, they're rogue. They're on their own. They're finding cash, you know, cash flow streams. And yeah, I, you know, I really, I think they shame science. Personally, I think so. Uh, maybe he had a good run, 30 year run with Ag Canada, and he's retired now and he's getting a pension. I, I don't know. But, man, I just, I'm not buying it. Okay, so I noticed that you you had, uh, you had weren't there for Dr. Copra's no. talk. So. And I was very careful because somebody said, well, you weren't here and you shouldn't have asked those questions. Well, I only asked questions on the stuff that I heard. Okay. Because after a while, you know, when, and I was standing at the back, and, you know, I caught your eye a couple of times, and I'm shaking my head, I'm just listening to this stuff pile up, and I just got to a point where either I was going to start mouthing off, or I had to leave. So I left. And I texted you, and I asked you to let me know when the question period was coming up, and I only asked questions on the stuff I was there to listen to. Right. So. And you got pretty <laughs> responses from the crowd. <laughs> well, can you imagine if I stayed the whole time? Hopefully, no way. Okay, so, <clears throat> just for the people who are watching mm -hmm. who, who weren't really aware of the ins and outs of this, when you say that it's, when we say that, that it's not possible for this area here to be a GE right. zone, explain what that means. Well, the fact is, we, we have gen genetically engineered plants here. There you go. Okay. Very. Yeah. And so, are those um, for human consumption, or are those like a decorative well, plants? Well, I don't know the human consumption side of it, okay. uh, because that's not my field of expertise okay. here. Okay, so I'll only speak to what I know. And as I pointed out uh, during the session last night, is that their definition of GMO and GE is very, very... I mean, it's limited, basically, to BT and Roundup Ready. There's a lot more in the genetic engineering that goes on in plants. And that's just a fact. So... An example would be... Well, you know, the, the strawberries, or, or even trees. You know, um, or the, the trees that are... The apple that doesn't go brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And it was interesting to see those two petitions in the back. And that wasn't even a part of what that supposed, supposed GMO and GE thing was all about. Oh, it's a GF brass event, so... Yeah, I know, but... I, I don't know, it, it just... Uh, it seems to me people are just too eager to grasp onto the big evils and, and say, we're going to bring them down. Okay, so... Aside from um, trying to point out there's fear mongering going on in, in, in the delivery of yeah. the, the message and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, do you agree with uh, 
the people who um, say that GE and GMO aren't uh, necessarily uh, completely safe in any way. I mean, no, I, I have I have no issues with eating anything GE. Okay, that's fair enough. Absolutely. So you're no, I, I have putting your principles where your stomach is. What's that? Putting your stomach where your principles are. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No. The, the fact is, there's tens of thousands of people who work in the field, and for a couple of guys to to say that well, we're the whistleblowers and now we're going to go on tour and make thirty bucks in our books and hundred bucks on our DVDs, you know, okay, guys, great, but make it a debate. Don't make it a mandate. Okay. Right. Fair enough. And that, and that's that's where I'm coming from. Like, you know, in my job as an integrated pest manager, it's part of my duty. And this is law in BC. And of course, these guys were not familiar with that, which bothered me a little bit as well. Is that they don't recognize and they acknowledge the fact after I spoke a little bit that oh, okay, well, maybe you do it for your business, but what about everyone else? But hey, no fella. This is BCY. This is a requirement by law to follow the Integrated Pest Management Act. Most people don't understand that. They don't understand what it is. So, trying to give them a little education last night, uh, apparently, drummed me out of the whole crowd, right? Because that was the last thing I said, was, how about Integrated Pest Management? Get out! We got enough of you! Get out! You know? It's like, really? Really? Well, I think a lot of people were felt like you were maybe monopolizing the time of the speakers. But hey, I can put up my hand like I, everyone I, else, I right? And yeah. you did get you did get your time, and, yeah. and I understand yeah. you know, that your frustration with what you see is fear mongering and the lack of reason. Uh, and and now the rest of you can hear his point and what yeah. not. And I agree with you or not. And I would I would be happy to uh, organize a, a uh, debate. A debate, yes, okay. where we could actually discuss this with appropriate authorities on either side of the issue. Even if these guys wanted to come back, but had a representation, say, from PMRA or CFIA. Okay. Because, of course, this, this is going to, you know, and I know where this is going to go. Because, you know, they came to us, the Ag Society came to us and said, um, we'd like counsel to... Uh, declare Grand Forks G free. Okay, well, we can't be that. We never will be. It's too late. Should have fought that fight 20 years ago when this was cutting edge. It's a moot point. Um, but where that now leads to is it's, it's a bit of a slippery slope because now you may get to, you know, I've already heard talk people saying, well, we should ban pesticide use for cosmetic purposes. Come on, folks. The, the only reason the only reason we can feed the people that we feed now is because of chemical pesticides. But if they ban them for cosmetic plants, would that impact on the food supply? It doesn't impact on the food supply. Right. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. That's that's the thing, mm -hmm. right? If it's still okay to spray 2,4-D on your tomatoes. But you can't spray it on your grass. What do you What do you think you're achieving? Well, as I understand it, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. The thinking is that mm -hmm. uh, supposedly studies have shown that people who are doing it for farm purposes, uh, either the farmer themselves or somebody they bring in, like he was an expert, mm -hmm. will tend to do it following the guidelines, etc., whereas people in the home doing it on their lawn and their garden... Okay, now we're talking, but we're talking about two different, two different issues here. Well, yeah. It's about application, yeah. because having a restricted pesticide, and I think, you know, yes, uh, re restricting the, those people who are allowed to use pesticides for education by getting licensed and all that kind of stuff, that is completely valid. So, what I mean for cosmetic use is, is not about who's spraying it, it's about the use. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
Well, so we what I'm suggesting is, is that, and this is, again, a part of the Integrated Pest Management Act, is that there's, a, and this actually is just currently under review, so they're actually talking about increasing the number or decreasing the number of um, pesticides available for domestic users, unlicensed users. Right. Which is a lot different than saying you can't spray 2,4-D. Yes. Right? Yeah, yes. Right. Okay. So, and Ontario, the province of Ontario is still undergoing a lawsuit, uh, you know, by, you know, it's a class action suit by... Uh, the major chemical companies. Uh, the well, no, also the users. Okay. Because it cut them out of a big part of their business. Right. Okay. Because, it, again, it was not... And BC actually is very progressive very progressive in, in having an integrated pest management act. There was a movement that was starting, you know, that was following Ontario, and it was, geez, in the wisdom of the Liberal government, surprisingly enough, they said, no, let's just tighten up the act that we have. And I think it was the best thing that, and they set basically a standard for what the rest of Canada can work towards. But, you know, this outright fear-based banning of stuff, it, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. The fact that, you know, and, and again, it's, a, it's about camps. You know, um, <laughs> you know, the organic producers have a vested interest in getting rid of, of everyone else. It's a, it's a bit of a type of a war, you know? Is, is organic food any better than non-organic food, or, I guess you can't call it non-organic, but um, conventional uh, food production. Right. Is it any better? Does it taste any better? Like, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, whatever. Yes, of course, and that decision is in the palate of the, the taste buds of the beholder. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as far as the, you know, the GMO thing, I am all for label. Because, you know, we have a great labeling system in Canada, and sure, I, I should uh, think that giving people the choice, uh, you know, those who decide to read the label and, you know, see if it's GMO or GE or whatever, hey, great. Give people a choice. Keep the debate open. Make the debate. Don't make it a mandate. Because if we're free. We're free to do the things that we want, you know, for the most part. And... You know, if we can make informed decisions, that's great, but don't try to whitewash me or greenwash me. Well, thank you, Gary. <laughs> You're well, welcome. No, I mean, we get the point across, and, yeah. and whether or not you agree with him or not, this is where this truth is coming from. Yeah. Um, and I'm all for self-education and learning how to understand what's going on and not be in a sense, at the mercy of people who may or may not be passing off fear as knowledge. Right. But, uh, right. Thank you, Gary. Okay, thank you.